Exploring closures. Currently we are in section 10 and we are about to check out the third video of this section. In this video we will check out what is closure in Dart. Well a closure can be defined as a special function within which you can mutate or modify the values of the variables present in the parent scope. Now in Java 8 you are not allowed to modify the parent scope variables within the closure or within the function. But in modern programming languages like Dart and Kotlin, you are allowed to modify the values of the variables present in the parent scope within the closure. So let us understand it better with the help of demo. So here within our editor, I have mentioned two definition of the closure. The first definition says that a closure is a function that has the access to the parent scope even after the scope has closed. So let me show you the code what exactly we mean by this statement. So suppose we have a function of show message that takes no parameter and it has an empty body as of now. End it with the help of semicolon, perfect. So here I have defined a lambda function and this function accepts zero parameter and its body is currently empty. Now suppose in the parent scope that is within our main function we define a variable such as string message dart is good and now within our function of show message we try to modify this message such as dart is awesome and then print out the message so here the compiler is not showing any error that is within our function of show message we are able to access the message variable present in the parent scope within our main function here. So within this function we are able to modify this message and then print out the modified version of the message variable. Within our main function if you call this method such as show message and then run the application then you are going to get dart is awesome that is our modified message. Perfect. So this function here is actually known as the closure. So a closure in dart is nothing but a special kind of function. Now here down below I have one more definition. Now both of these definitions are almost similar. You can say I am just going to show you one more example of the closure. So down below here let us define a new function talk that again takes no parameter and has some body. Now this time I am going to define the message variable here itself within this function such as string message equal to high. And now within this function let us define one more function such as say. And within this say function let us print out the message. And if you want you can also modify the variable of message equal to hello. Perfect. So here again if you notice we are trying to access the message variable which is present within one more function of talk. And now this function talk is actually going to return the say function. Perfect. And now down below here, let us use var speak equal to talk function. Now once you call this talk function, it is simply going to return the say function. And this say function contains the body that access the message variable present in the parent scope of talk. Perfect. So if you call this speak function, then let's see what happens. And there we go in the output, we are getting hello. That is the modified version of this message as hello instead of hi. Now the second example might be little confusing for you. So let me explain you again what exactly is going on here. Now here, if you notice, we have assigned where speak equal to talk. Now this speak is actually a function. Just because the talk function is returning the say function which is then assigned to this speak variable function. So in the runtime, this speak function is actually the talk function. Now since the talk function actually returns the say function in return, so this talk function can be represented as the say function. Perfect. Then comes the say function. Now the say function actually has the body of print message in the end, right? So here we have the body of print message. Perfect. Now this print message simply prints out the message variable. 
So in the output, we get hello, perfect. So in short, what I'm trying to say is the save function is actually present within the scope of talk function. And this save function is being used outside the talk function here in the form of speak function. So even if we use the speak function, then also the save function is able to hold the reference of this message variable. So that is why in the output, we get hello as the message. Perfect. So in the end, just remember, as per the definition 1 and 2, in the definition 1, we learned that the closure is able to modify the variable present in the parent scope. And in the definition 2, the closure is not only able to modify the variable present in the parent scope, but also it is able to remember it when it is used outside its original scope as well, which you can see here. Perfect. So that's all for this video. Well, this was a very small concept on closure, but trust me, the closure topic is really very crucial while developing any application. So finally, we have reached the end of this section. So in this section, we first checked out what is a lambda expression. Now a lambda expression is just an anonymous function or you can say just a lambda or even you can name it as the nameless function. Just because the lambda expression does not contain any name, but you can assign it to a variable. Then we explored what are higher order function. That is a function where we can pass a function as a parameter or where you can return another function or even you can do both within the same function. And in the end, we checked out what are closures, which is again a special kind of function. So coming up next, we will explore the Dart collection framework.